All right, I only saw one person leave, so that's a good sign. <laughs> Hopefully they just had to work. Okay. Um, inspiration. Now perspiration. Now let's get practical. You, you got the, I'm not going to try to put these under create, receive, and rescue and make it nice and funnily for you. Um, so just hang on and take some notes. Um, there, there in some, some things in parenting are absolutes. There, there's absolutes that go kind of across the spectrum. Um, I know we live in a world where we don't like that kind of recently. Like, oh, no, everything's kind of flowy. and we can. There are some things in parenting that are absolutes. Diapers full, you got to change it, right? There's, there's things that are absolutes. 14-year-old um, thinks they're 18, they're still 14. Absolutes. But um, some things aren't absolutes. And some things we got to kind of move around. Um, I, there's, there's this video I want to show you of what, what parenting looks like from having babies all the way to having, I, I'm assuming, I only have a 16-year-old, but it seems like she's on the trajectory towards I'm still going to have to parent her at 28. We'll, we'll see. But my parents still kind of have to parent me in some ways when I lean into them. But this is what parenting looks like for us in one season or another. See if you can relate to this. Watch this. Oh, you know what? Maybe I didn't give you that video. Was it, is it just an image? It is. So maybe you can find that, find that, find that video in that Dropbox and pull it over. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, but um, fail. Okay, that was going to be funny, but we'll come back to that in a second. So, um, just give me a thumbs up when you've got it, Michelle. But absolutes. Th there's some things that that are absolutes for for our kids. Um, well, the first thing that our kids need adults, super important, who will show up consistently and predictably over time. Two main words. Your kids need to know that you're going to show up consistently and predictably over time. Um, it's, it's super important. Obviously, as infants, you know that they need you to be consistent and, and predictable. But also, my 14-year-old, as much as, as I feel like she would like at some points, to not have anything to do with me, she really, it surprises me when she suddenly, I'll do something and she kind of snuggles back up to me. You know, I'm like, oh, what did I do? Then I like dissect everything that I've said over the last 30 <laughs> minutes. But I'm just showing up, just showing up, showing up. So our kids need adults who will show up consistently and predictably over time. Sometimes it'll look like this. Watch this. Wait, no. No. Hayes, uh-uh, don't do it. No. Don't do it. No. Don't do it. Don't do it. No. 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 Don't even think of, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. Don't even think about, no! Uh-uh, no! No! <laughs> no! Oh my gosh. <laughs> Who can relate to that? Yes, just like constantly. And then did you see how baby was kind of like learned I can, how I can make her say no? You know, she wasn't even now thinking that I'm gonna go for the thing, for the glass anymore. I'm just gonna make my mom say no now, you know? But we gotta be careful. No. But yeah, that, that's what it looks like. So. Kids need, need adults who show up consistently and predictably over time. Here's kind of the, the phases. In preschool, if you have a preschooler, or you're going to have a preschooler, your kids need you to show up so they know you. Super important. That's in preschool. This is why you show up for a preschooler. Show up so they know you. In elementary school, your kids need you to show up so they know you know them. It's a shift. Okay, preschool, just so they know you. Elementary school, they need to show up so that they know you know them. In middle school, kids need to show up so they know you know them now. Big difference. Your middle schooler 100% does not want you to treat them like they were. And it, this can just straight up be from fifth to sixth grade. 
they feel like, I'm in sixth grade now. I'm not in fifth grade no more. They want you to know that you know them now, who they are. You know, speaking of this, um, Sayana, my middle child, when she turned 12, she went from being daddy's little girl, stuck to my leg 24-7. I mean, just all the time. She's just always with me. Telling me everything, talking 100 miles an hour. And then, like, the second week she was 12, she just stopped. And, like, I was like, she'd come home from, you know, they go to, they go to their homeschool, but they go two days a week to, like, a homeschool school. So they're not really homeschooled, but she came home. And I was like, hey, baby, how was school today? Fine. Fine. Like, like what happened? She used to literally tell me, oh, you dropped me off at, at 8, and then blah, 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 and she'll talk for 30 minutes, and then it went to one word. I was like, what do you mean, fine? She's like, fine. Okay. The next day, I was like, hey, babe, how was gymnastics? Fine. <sighs> well, baby, like, uh, I mean, did you, did you learn any new tricks or anything? No. Nah. Oh. And I'd literally start to panic. After like a week of this, I'm convinced she's on drugs, right? <laughs> Heather, she's on drugs. We, let's go look in a room. It's, something's happening. No, she, I, she's okay. No, 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 something's wrong. So I finally, like, the, the whole idea of a middle schooler needing you to show up so they know you know them now, I called one of her um, small group leaders at church. So they're in small groups, and um, I said, hey, Sayana, like, is completely disconnected from me. Like, is she, is, is everything okay? Like, at church, is she acting weird? Because I think she's on drugs. <laughs> and she's like, she's fine. Like, she's actually great. Like, she's like a leader in our group. And she, I was like, she talks? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. She like, she like prays over the kids. And I was like, what? I, and her small group leader, she was like a freshman at Vanderbilt. She's like, well, do you know what she's into? Is what she said. And I was like, well, yeah, I know. It's like dumb YouTube boy videos that she watches all the time. Like, I, yeah, she's like, no, 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 no. Like, do you really know? And I was like, well, I guess not. She goes, do you know that her friends, every week they come, they grab these water bottles. And they flip these water bottles for fun. Have you guys seen this? The, the kids are flipping water bottles, getting them to land. And, and that's, they do it all the time. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah. There's actually this YouTube video of, of this, like, cute teenage boy that won a talent show flipping a water bottle. And I was like, what? So she sent it to me. And she goes, this is why they're doing it. So le let me show you guys this video of this boy. Remember, when we were in high school, I feel like we had to have talent to win a talent show. <laughs> now kids are winning talent shows doing this. What, what's this? <laughs> I mean, oh, man. So I have all kinds of thoughts just about that by itself. But at the moment, she's like, this is why they do it. So I was like, okay. So she goes to church Wednesday night. She comes home. And I'm like, hey, baby, how was church tonight? Fine. Um, hey, you know that water bottle flipping thing that you guys like to do? She was like, yeah. It's like, well, do you want to go in the back? and do a dual father-daughter water bottle flip and land it to the music that the guy did because obviously that was his talent. The talent part was that it landed when the music. So you want to go in the backyard and do it? And we'll even do it on Facebook Live. Yeah, Dad, I'd love that. So we go back, and I have it all set up already, and I've been practicing for hours. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, we're, 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 I want to hit it at the same time. So I downloaded that song. Dun, 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 dun. And we turn on Facebook Live, and I want to show you what happened. Watch this. Yeah! 
We did it! 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 We did
we can't parent like it's the Wild West. We, we, we can't parent like it's Vegas, right? That a lot of times with technology, we parent like it's Vegas. Kind of like, whoosh. oh, yeah, six and eight, you know. Not that I know how to play craps. <laughs> but we, we parent that way sometimes. And we, we, we can't parent like it's Vegas. We, we, we can't parent. We have to be super intentional with our parenting. You know, um, I have a story I tell about kind of parenting like, like it's, it's Vegas. We, we, have a, we have a dog named um, Pope. Pope is our dog because we love A, Olivia Pope from Scandal, and, and B, just the Pope in general. He's a cool guy. So we named our dog Pope. And this is a picture of Pope, a puppy. He's so little. He's a Bernese Mountain dog. So we, we, I mean, he, when we got him, this is my, I'd never seen a Bernese Mountain dog. My wife's like, we got a puppy. I was like, oh, this is so cute. And then four months later, this is a picture of Pope. That he just, just kept <laughs> so big. 115 pounds. So Pope is the friendliest dog you've ever met. He's just a bear. He's just like so soft and fluffy. And we moved into a, a new neighborhood. And when we moved in the neighborhood, um, I went over to meet my next door neighbor. And his name was Tommy. And Tommy was a retired teacher. His kids were all out of the house and, and his wife. And so I said, Tommy, come over and meet my family. So he came over and he met Heather, so hey, Luciana, Josiah, and Pope. Um, he's like, oh, Pope, and Pope's just, you know, wagging his tail. And I was like, Pope's, Pope's just an inside dog, you know, so you don't have to worry about him pooping on your lawn. It's fine. He's like, well, come over and meet my pets and my wife. So I walked over and I meet, meet his wife. And um, uh, I'm not a great neighbor because I can't remember his wife's, wife's name. <laughs> Only lived there for a year. Don't judge me. But um, he introduced, I do remember his pet's names. And he, he, had, he actually introduced me to his pet chicken. And, and the, he had a pet chicken. And in Nashville, everyone's got backyard chickens. We have backyard chickens. Um, but he named his chicken, which was just kind of weird. His chicken's name was Stella. It's like, hey, Stella. And Stella would follow Tom around every single morning. Like, I'd see him outside and just follow him around. So two weeks after living in this house, I'm out somewhere in Nashville. You know where the story's going. And I get a call from Sayana. And she is screaming like bloody murder. Dad! Dad, come home! And it was that, that, that scream that, like, as a parent... Like, I'm thinking something horrible has happened to one of my kids. And I was like, baby, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? She's like, no, no, Pope. And immediately when she said Pope, I was like, I felt better. But, but I still was like, oh, no, what happened to Pope? Did Pope get hit by a car? I was like, what happened to Pope? She's like, nothing happened to Pope. Pope's out in the yard, and he's running around the yard, and, he, and Stella's hanging out of his mouth. Pope killed Stella. No, 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 no. How'd Pope get out? He hit the door was open and he ran out and Stella was out and he grabbed her and now he's running around and Stella's dead. I was like, put your mom on the phone. So Heather gets on the phone. It's like, babe. She's like, you need to come home. <laughs> and you need to go tell your neighbor that your dog killed his chicken. <laughs> I'm like, wait, this dog was your idea. <laughs> now it's my dog. So I get home and I sit in the driveway and I pull out my trusty phone. And I Google what to tell your neighbor when your dog kills her chicken. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. You can try it. You can, test, you can test me. Ten pages. Ten pages of backyard chicken forms. All saying, if your dog kills your neighbor's chicken, if you are more sad than they are, then they'll for forgive you immediately. It's like, really? I mean, this was like common knowledge on all these forms. It's like, okay. So I was like, okay, get sad. Get sad. Get sad. So I walk over, and I knock on my neighbor's door. He's like, Carlos! And I was like, Whew. And I was trying, trying to get sad. But it wasn't happening. I was, like, I was hoping for one Denzel tear to just, like, <laughs> slow-mo just go down my cheek. And I was trying nothing. So I was like, Tommy, man, I got some bad news. He's like, what? I was like, Pope? He let me. He said, "What happened to Pope?" I was like, "Nothing." Pope actually got out of the house, and man, he 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 killed Stella. Stella, and immediately, like he was devastated. And right when I failed at my performance, my wife comes walking up behind me with real tears in her eyes. I mean, she's like weeping. She's like, "We're so sorry." And immediately he goes. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's in a dog's nature. And I just was like, 
It worked. Like, oh my gosh, it worked. And he forgave us. She, she brought him over a six pack of Stella the next day, just like for like a offering. And like, she, he, it was like, it became a joke. And he went from devastated to it worked. And I think to myself, this is how we parent. This is how so many times I parent. Something goes wrong, I'm like, Google, what's wrong with my 13-year-old crackhead? Like, like, how do I get them off of their drugs? That's how we parent. There has to be a better way, right, than just kind of crapshooting our parenting. Yes, there is. And I'm telling you what, this, the most Sunday school thing you hear me say today, it's all right here. It literally is all right here. The more time you spend in the Word, the more activated your parenting is going to be when it comes to parenting kids that are healthy. We don't have to parent like it's Vegas. We don't have to go to Google. We can go to the Word of God. So with technology as it's changing, we're getting close here. I believe that we cannot parent our kids if we're not applying the same principles to our own technology use. Um, I, I am, I, I use this thing, this is, this is my source of income. I mean, it's, I'm on this thing all the time. So like when iOS 12 came out and like screen time is a new thing on iOS 12, like it, sh- it shows me how much I'm on this thing. And actually, honestly, like I look at it, it said yesterday I was on this thing for eight hours and 30 minutes. Most of that I, I was working. But the truth is, I, have to, I, I can't tell my kid that they can't be on their devices if, if all they see is me on my device. So how can we meet somewhere? How can we make sure that we're tracking ourselves so that we can parent our kids as well? Well, I, I, I believe that there's, in different phases with technology, I like to teach these three things. In preschool, for technology, it's there to enjoy the advantages, you know, that, that's, that's what your kids want to do. Obviously, for a lot of time when our kids are in preschool, for us as parents, it's just survival. Like, if they can stare at something for 10 minutes instead of me, <laughs> that would be awesome. Well, I mean, when my kids were little, they, we, didn't, we didn't have iPhones yet. We didn't have technology or Samsung. We, we just had Leapsters. They still make those things? Yeah, they do. Like, you put it, we actually put, like, a cartridge in that. Remember? Remember cartridges, guys? <laughs> You'd, like, <laughs> blow on it, blow on it, and Nintendo would get that thing working. Enjoy the advantages. Elementary school, explore the, pos- the possibilities. Middle school, collaborate a plan. In high school, we want to expand their potential. Let me say that again. Preschool, enjoy the advantages. Elementary school, explore the possibilities. Middle school, collaborate a plan. In high school, expand their potential. That's what we want to do when it comes to technology. Um, where, where, where are, what's the next slide that we have coming up here? And then the next one. Okay. Some of the things that, that we've done as a family, especially, again, tech, we're, we're in it. The p- parents that try to be Amish that live in San Francisco, it's not going to work. Right? Or live down, it's not going to work. So, like, you, you, have to, you have to surf the wave, not try to stop the wave, right? Some of the things we do. And this was what, what happened in middle school for us, is we, when our kids wanted social media, I was like, yeah, you can have Instagram and all the things, but it's going to be on my phone. So whenever they used it, they'd say, hey, Dad, can I get on Instagram? Sure. And they had my device. Um, only my 16-year-old now has it on her phone, and I've got that thing blocked off like, a, like Alcatraz. But, um, but my, my 14-year-old still only uses social media on my phone, my device. Um, password exchange, trust is a huge thing. So, hey, my kids, I get their password, but guess whose passwords they get? Mine. So they feel, I don't know when, I mean, maybe they're checking on me, I don't know, but they've got the password, they've got that trust. And then we always do, I, every week, phone check, and they know that they have 15 seconds from when I yell to hand that phone in my hand. Phone check, bam, comes, comes to me every single time. So, again, we, the, the technology is there, but we want to protect them. We want to protect them. What do we have next? Sorry, I, I've, I've lost track of my slides on my thing. Okay, Unglue has been, anyone heard of Unglue before? It's, a, okay, this app, especially for teens, has changed 
the game for us. No more arguments about screen time, all those things. See, I think when, when, uh, when kids are younger, screen time's important because, honestly, my son, when he stares at you, you guys know your kids when they get technology eyes, yeah. right? Like, you can tell. Like, they, they, they don't even have to tell them themselves. You can tell if they've been on that screen for hours because they're just like, like the walking dead, right? <laughs> like, it, it's, it's blatant. It's obvious. Something's happening to their eyeballs. So, um, so we, uh, there's another app for my son that is screen time, but for my daughters, I don't, honestly, I don't care about screen time because they're about to get out of the house and they're going to be on screens all the time. I've done what I can. Unglue is the best thing for us. Watch this. This is really cool. Unglue is an app for my daughters. Let's see if we have the, the video for it. Oh, rise up, Falcons. My screens. Okay. So, um, Unglue is, oh, it's kind of, it's kind of embarrassing. You see all my stuff, but, um, Right here, what it does is it actually measures entertainment time, not screen time. So when it comes to teens, I can see now 3, 3.13 a.m., that would normally freak me out, but we were on a plane to San Francisco last night. So that's 3.13 East Coast time. But I can see all the stuff they're doing. I can, they can do chores for time, internet schedule. Um, let's see, entertainment time of day. They get two hours of entertainment time of day. What does that mean? Well, watch this. Their phones are very important to them. They, they all have their phones. I tell their phone, entertainment time, they only get two hours a day. Watch that. It's only counting Netflix, YouTube, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. When those things finish up the two hours, the phone keeps working, but the apps stop working. Yeah. Game changer for our family. So they, they, they can still text each other actually have a phone call with their friends? Do you know how to do that, kids? Like, hi, this is Sayana. What are you doing today? No, like, they can talk to each other, but the, the socials go away. And you can adjust those things up and down. Something else that's beautiful, there's a time bank. So they know that they only get two hours a day. If they only use, they know there's a slumber party coming up, and the, their girlfriends are going to be on the phones all night, they'll only use 15 minutes a day because they know they're saving it in the bank. And then when the weekend comes... They have, they can cash it in. It's so good. And then also, we have chores for time on there for my kids. If they exercise, I, there, there's, a, there's a step meter on there. So if I see they hit 10,000 steps a day, they get an extra 15 minutes. There's all kinds of things that this is not a paid advertisement for Unglue, but it's, I've tried every one of them. I've tried every single kind of health technology things out there. This is the one for our tweens and teens that has worked the best. Um, and then for my son, we use Our Pact. See, yep, Our Pact. And this is more of a screen time thing. So it's straight up is just like he gets, this is going to sound Amish, but he only gets 30 minutes. I, I don't know why I keep using Amish, but th 30 minutes of technology time a day. Um, and uh, let's see if we have the, I think we have a picture of this one. Um, or maybe we do have a, maybe not. Let's see. No? No? Like, yeah, there it is right here. So. I mean, that's little Losai, because that's how I remember him, just cute and chubby. But he's got uh, 30 minutes a day of technology time. This actually goes on our PlayStation 4. It goes on our Xbox. It goes on all of our things. And so it, it counts it all as he logs in. Um, our pact is a good one. There's a whole bunch of good um, screen time monitoring things. So it's just different. When he gets a little bit older, he'll move into unglue for us. Um, OK. Then hang on one second. Sorry, guys. I'm a little off here. Oh, I found it now. So only our pact. Okay. So I'll, I'll, really, I'll really just end with this. My daughters, who are 14 and 16, have been watching Friends on Netflix, which is just strange. But they binged on Friends, which is what I watched in the 90s, right? And they love it. And I asked my daughter, Sayana, I said, baby, how come, how come friends? Like, what is it about that? She's like, I love that they don't have phones. That's what she said. My 14-year-old told me that. I was like, really? She said, yeah, dad. Like, they just talked to each other. I was like, what about your phone? She's like, oh, I have to have my phone. But I wish I didn't. There's, there's, there's a shift happening. There's a, there's a shit, and I'm seeing it with all their friends, too, that they're desperate for authentic community, you know, like tangible, analog community is what they want. And 
for me, in order to get freedom, I needed my driver's license. Now, when my daughter turned 16, like I was, I was at the DMV the morning I turned 16. She was 16 for three months, didn't even want a car. Why? Because they don't need a car for freedom. They've, they've got it in their hands. And so things are, are different, but they're desiring this community, and I'm seeing a pendulum swinging. And so, you know, with that, um, we, we've done some things, um, and I like to teach my kids some things, not only kids, but friends of mine, when it comes to how is it that we can maybe save our souls a little bit. I, um, um, when it comes to technology in general, this is, this is my, my stick with it. I believe that it's not technology. I believe that we just have access to too many people's stories. I believe that our souls are the same souls that God created in Eden. And so as technology has advanced, our souls have not. Our souls are still the same souls. So when my parents, or no, when my grandparents stepped into someone else's story, I tell my kids this all the time, somebody had to write them a letter. And the letter was either good news or bad news. And when they read the letter, they would step into their story. And they would take that story and put it on their soul. And then they could carry that. And that's how it was forever. Then, the advent of the telephone and the telegram. And now suddenly more stories, and this is all in the last 100, 150 years. More stories can go on the soul. More, and I'm, I'm not talking about technology, I'm talking about our souls, okay? Then, the answer machine. Now, now more stories, more bad news, more good news. Good news, bad news. It's still stories on our soul. 24-hour news. Next thing you know, now I wake up in the morning and I place more stories on my soul than my grandparents placed in one day in an entire year. And we wonder why it's so heavy, why they're so heavy. So some of the things that, that we do and some things that I like to do and some things maybe you guys can do, this. I delete my social media every single day. This is what I do. I delete my apps when I finish using them. So at lunchtime, I'll install Instagram and I'll get on there. I'm not missing anything. I, I have to log in and I get to use it. And when I'm done, I delete it. And then at night, I'll install it again. And all day long, if you follow me on Instagram, I'm, I'm, it looks like I use this thing 24 seven. I'm, I'm sharing stories all the time, but I'm capturing the content. I'm just not throwing it up there. And guess what? Sometimes I just forget to reinstall it. And I realize I can breathe a little bit easier. Um, that, that's one thing that we do. Um, I subscribed to a paper newspaper. <laughs> Go figure. Like I, the, the, I, there's a guy in like a 1980s Trans Am that drives by my house every, like, every morning and throws it out the window. It's the craziest thing. And I walk out there and I pick it up and I read it. And it's where I used to get my news on Twitter and then I'd start with the news and then an hour and a half later I'd be somewhere else. So now I get it from a newspaper. That's fun. Um, I, and I love the news. I love politics. I'm all in. But I, guess what? I read it once a day now. Um, I have bought my kids actual cameras. Like they actually have like a, a camera, which is actually a device that's not in your phone, that they take with them places. And I've taught them how to use ISO and aperture. And they're taking these pictures on their camera, which is really cool. There's something, again, with the soul about not sharing something right away, keeping it for the moment, keeping it for yourself. Um, again, we use, uh, what's next up here? Pick up a hobby that doesn't include technology. I'm going to use technology every day the rest of my life. What are some tangible things you guys can do? Every year, I pick up a new hobby that, uh, and my kids do as well, I make everybody do it, that doesn't include technology. So I, my son and I started making knives two years ago. Um, there's a show called Forged in Fire or something like that. Like, so, yeah, you're in the knife back there, all right. I watched one episode of that, and before the end of the episode, my wife's like, what'd you just spend $200 on Amazon for? And I had like a, <laughs> I'd bought a forge and I'd bought, I'd bought like a sand belt sander and all this metal. And we made some like three really bad knives that year. <laughs> but it was just so, so good. I got into fly fishing, got into all these things that I think our souls are dangerously close um, to, to being overwhelmed. And I, I do a lot of work in, in um, mental illness. I'll talk about this in church tomorrow, but in anxiety and depression, I work with an organization called To Write Love on Her Arms, 
That d- and there is an absolute 100%. Um, it coincided with the, the amount of mental illness that happens with the advance of technology. It just has. It's, it's, just, it's just what's happened. So just be careful. All of these things are great tools. I, I, use, I use technology. I love technology. But I think it's really important for us to help our kids be careful. Um, any more slides that we got up here? Let's see here. All right. That's just me. So if you want to find me, if you want to hang out with me, these are places. Um, tomorrow, I'm talking. If Come back. Because I'm going to be talking about this concept called Kill the Spider. And I really think that it's going to be a good second step from what, we're, what we've been talking about today. I know a lot of this stuff was real practical. Um, that was the point, to give you guys some tangible things you can hang on to. And um, that's it. Thanks, guys, for letting me hang out. And you're free. <laughs> do one thing. Yeah. <laughs>